Our story takes place 800 years ago, in a small landlocked country surrounded by bigger ones. The world was at war, but the country continued to exist independently. No country attempted to even take over. In fact, the country flourished thanks to its one commodity, medicine. When the world is at war, people need soldiers. And if people need soldiers, they also need medicine and herbs. Every major power that surrounded the tiny country shared a truce not to invade the small country. But what made the country's medicine different from other countries? The medicines created there were enhanced thanks to the alchemists who lived there. These alchemists, however, thought of refining existing medicine as pastime. They had other motives in mind. But since the country was economically stable and safe, many alchemists traveled there to find employment. When the current king ascended to the throne, he gathered all the alchemists and gave them one command. Unleash your desires onto this world. Doing so will fulfill my very first step into my own ambitions. The king supported the alchemists in any way he could. The result was the creation of the core metal, the power of living beings condensed into a metal. The birth of these core metals increased the power of O's. With this new power, the ancient king began his own invasion of the surrounding countries. He utilized the core metals strategically in order to conquer new lands. He enslaved its citizens from there, and before long, his reign extended beyond just a small country, and in time, became the ruler of an entire continent. But he wanted more. He wanted to extend his reign throughout the rest of the world. To do so, he had the alchemists create something. There are 10 core metals, one for each type of species. Gala, the king's head alchemist, took one core metal from the complete set, leaving only 9 core metals. That missing core metal would leave behind a desire to become complete for the creatures they intended to create. The alchemists then filled these set of core metals with a vast amount of cell metals, giving life to what they would call greeds. The first greed to be born was Ankh. Prior to his awakening, he had a dream where he was a giant bird. He commanded and guided all the species of birds on the earth. He was narcissistic. He called himself beautiful. He enjoyed the scenery of the world and its colors, as there was no place in the world he couldn't reach. He felt that everything belonged to him. One day, he felt a tiny human on his back. He couldn't shake them off, and the human ended up ripping their hands into Ankh, taking a medal from him. When Ankh awoke from his dream, he realized he couldn't see any color or feel the temperature of the room. He looked at his body and felt disgusted by his grotesque body. He was no longer a bird. The king greeted him, happy birthday. Ankh attacks him in anger. However, his attempt failed because he was too weak. The king explains that the reason why Ankh feels so drained of energy is because he lacks cell metals in his body. The king begins throwing cell metals at Ankh. This strengthens Ankh a bit and gives him the strength to continue attacking. As the king dodges, he throws Ankh more cell metals. This dance continues for a while until the king decides to transform into O's. The king displays his strength against Ankh by simply beating him up until eventually he digs his claws into Ankh, removing 6 core metals and only leaving 3. After showing off the power of O's, the king summons his alchemists, and they all pour a huge amount of cell metals into four other sarcophaguses. Each one had nine sets of core metals, each belonging to four other kings. Uva, Mezul, Gamel, and Kazali were born. The king orders everyone to collect cell metals by creating yummies from people. He explained his plan of conquering other lands. Ang thought this was suspicious. The king is powerful enough to invade other countries on his own, so why would he even need greeds, or need that many cell metals to do so? Time passes, and Ankh approaches the other greeds, asking them for their help to kill the king. They all seem hesitant to join in on the plan, especially because Ankh was considered the king's loyal servants. Ankh was tasked with collecting everyone's cell medals, and he had to deliver them personally to the king. That aside, even if they wanted to kill the king, they wouldn't know how because he's so powerful. And plus, like Ankh, the king took some of their core medals. The conversation goes nowhere until Kazali speaks up and shows an interest in Ankh's plan. However, Ankh is suspicious of Kazali because he's the only one who easily gave up his core medals to the king. Ankh felt Kazali had something up his sleeve. Ankh puts his suspicions aside for the moment and explains his plan to take down the king. They would need their core medals back, and Ankh knew where they were in the king's palace. They would also need powerful yomis to aid them in their fight. Ankh knew when the king would be away from his palace, but until that day came, they would need to prep. Ankh searches the area for a human with an intense desire using his abilities as a greed. Despite losing many of his senses when he became a greed, he gained the ability to see inside people's minds, specifically their desire. He eventually senses a human whose desire is complete darkness. He rushes to where this human is and finds a little girl wandering around. This bewildered Ankh, how can a little girl possess such a dark desire? He slowly approaches her and she turns around and asks, 
Mr. Birdie, his confusion intensifies. Unk's grotesque appearance is the opposite of what a bird looks like. Unk corrects her and tells her that he's not a bird. This surprises the little girl, who now believes she's having a conversation with a talking bird. After some back and forth bickering, the little girl starts to approach Unk with her hands out, as if she's trying to feel for walls. She trips on a branch, but Unk manages to catch her, and she thanks him. Her gratitude caused a whirlwind of feelings within Unk. Unk, now flustered, drops her onto the ground. Unk discovers that she's looking for a blue bird, and unfortunately, Unk tells her that he's red. Unk notices that she was facing the other way while talking. Unk asks her if she's blind, and she says yes. As they continue to chat, Unk creates a yummy out of her without her noticing, her desire to see the world. Unk returns to the palace to deliver cell medals to the king. He finds Kazali in the king's room, having a private conversation. This raises Unk's suspicion again, as Kazali revealed the plan to the king. Kazali excuses himself from the room, leaving a nervous Ankh and the king by themselves. The king reveals that Kazali did inform him of their planned rebellion, and instead of being furious about it, this brings joy to him, because this means Ankh is living true to his desires. Now the king asks Ankh to betray the greeds. In exchange, Ankh will be rewarded with his missing core medal. Ankh was hesitant and angry at first, until the king compels him by ripping his hands into a nearby dog and eagle hybrid creature ripping its heart out and crushing it. Unk, paralyzed by fear, agreed to the king's plan. After some time, Unk leaves the palace and it begins to rain. He makes his way to the little girl's cabin to find comfort in her storytellings. You see, the condor Yomi has been going around ripping people's eyes out, squeezing those eyes over the little girl's head, and the blood and fluid would actually give her the ability to see beautiful sights from the people they come from. Unk has the girl tell him what she sees in detail. Through her stories, Unk relives his dreams of being the king of birds. This time was different, however. The girl was too afraid to tell Ankh what she saw. After some back and forth, the girl sits up and tells Ankh what she's been afraid to tell him. She saw a little girl being beaten. And eventually, this man took her eyesight. Ankh immediately realized that the girl in these visions were of the little girl herself. And the man abusing her is her father. Disgusted by what he saw, Ankh made his way to the nearby estate owned by her father. It was heavily guarded and on high alert, probably due to the condor yummy coming by and harming the owner. Her mother was one of the housekeepers at the estate. She died shortly after the girl was born. The little girl did live there until her father kicked her out. The only reason she survived so far is because the servants brings her food. Ankh killed all the guards and made his way to the master's headquarters. The now eyeless man whimpered and begged Ankh to spare his life, offering money and whatever he wanted. His cries reminded Ankh of himself when he was at the mercy of the king. Disgusted at himself and the girl's father, he dealt a quick but deadly blow. Ankh made his way back to the girl's cabin and saw that it was on fire. It was surrounded by the townspeople, who were probably related to the Condor Yomi's victims. Ankh chose to watch from afar instead of helping. The Condor Yomi made its way down to try and save the little girl. The Condor Yomi killed everyone except for one. As the Condor Yomi approached the human, he turned into nothing but cell metals. The girl had died in the fire. Ankh felt nothing. On the day the king was away from the palace, it was time to enact the plan to kill the king. The greed stormed the palace killing every creature in experiment there, and collecting all the cell medals they drop. They eventually find the box that contained everyone's core medals. Everything was in there, except for the 10th medal that was taken from them at birth. Kazali attempted to betray everyone by taking it for himself. Ang anticipated all this and informed the rest of the greeds beforehand. Gamel and Mizuol stopped Kazali, while Ang gave everyone their core medals back. Everyone overpowered Kazali, but before they could finish him off, Kazali tries to convince everyone that Ankh was probably working for the king. Ankh admits that he was asked by the king to betray the greeds, but he dispels everyone's fears by giving Kazali back to his core medals, telling him that he needs everyone, including Kazali, to kill the king. Now that everyone is whole again, except for their 10th core medal, which is in the king's possession, they make their way to an old church on the border of their country. The king chose to stay at a church, separate from the rest of his army. He was fascinated by the world's religions, and he was obsessed with becoming a god. When the greeds enter the church, the king appears right in front of the cross, awaiting their arrival. Per Ankh's plan, the greeds needed to somehow stop him in place. They all attacked the king and waited for him to jump out of the way and land. Gamel struck the ground as he landed, which forced the king to stumble. Uva, Kazali, and Mizul rush to the king and create Yomis out of him. Ankh throws a huge amount of cell metals at the Yomis in order to speed up their evolution. Kazali's parasitic Yomi becomes a lion Yomi and absorbs the king. But the king was too strong. He burst right out of the lion yummy and transformed into O's using the Tatoba combo. The greeds, alongside their yummies, put up a good fight against the king. 
In fact, they managed to beat him to a point where he started to slow down, but the king had one more ace up his sleeve. Ankh's betrayal. Ankh gives the king his Condor and Kujak core medals. The king, using the Tajador combo, manages to overpower all of the greeds and their yummies. Here, he beats down all of the greeds and takes everyone's core medals, leaving only one left. Ankh demands that the king keep his end of the bargain, but the king has other plans. He rips all of Ankh's core medals out of him, leaving only one. All the greeds, even Ankh, are barely holding on. Meanwhile, all of the core medals dance around the king, and an invisible force began to suck everything into the king, including the greeds. Ankh managed to hang with just his right hand, but the rest of his body turned into cell medals and was absorbed into the king. The king began to groan in pain. He wanted to use all of the core medals and cell medals to ascend to godhood, but he could not contain the immense power. His body completely crumbled into stone. Ankh, now only a right hand, jumped into the light the core medals were radiating. He tried to take as many core medals as he could. At the same time, the core medals exploded with a powerful energy, and Ankh, once again, drifted into a dream. He was a giant red bird again, and with him was the little girl. He took her on his back, and they ventured off into the skies, away from harm. The story ends with Ankh waking up in the present day to Eiji calling his name. He asks Ankh for the medals because Yomi showed up. Ankh groans and gives them to Eiji. Ankh looks to the sky and vows to take back everything he once held. The End If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel. Until next time.